All right, everybody, today we're going to talk about how we use predictive analysis and forecasting and profit off of the marketplace, the stock market, the futures market, to be specific. But you could apply this to, you know, the S&P 500 and potentially other uh, stock indexes and even other uh, futures products. So I know there's a lot of a lot on this chart. You know, there's a lot of different colors and lines and what is going on here. So we're going to talk about quite a bit today. Yesterday, uh, I, when I put out my Friday video, if you haven't watched it, you can look in the description of this video, and the link will be just below the video. You can go watch; it's a really good video. And I always share my profit loss every day, guys. If I have a position that I close, I always show my profit loss so you can go see at the end of that video if I made a trade and if I made money or lost money. But today we're going to talk about how do I go about predicting and forecasting the futures market, in this case the S&P 500, and then how do I profit off of that? So let's get started, okay? Over here on the left you can see Starting on the left-hand side here, the arrow is, you can see this green arc. So these, these arcs are basically time frames. Okay, and you see there's one here, there's another one here, there's another one here, here, and it keeps going out into the future, right? So this is called a cycle. Each of these green arcs are cycles. Now, I'm not going to dive really deep into all the principles and of cycle analysis. This is uh, Hearst cycles. I'm just going to keep it pretty basic and tell you today how I make use of these cycles among other things that we're going to talk about as part of one of the tools in my in my toolbox, so to speak, that helps me be a successful trader. You know, by the way, I trade uh, full time. I, I wasn't always that way, but you know, I am now a full-time trader. And that can, that can include um, intraday trades, but also can include swing trades. And the difference between the two is when volatility is really high, there's going to be probably a lot more intraday or what people call day trading. When volatility is low, you're almost forced to do swing trading, which can last anywhere from you know, a couple days to a few weeks. Okay, right now, needless to say, the market has a lot of volatility, so there's a lot of trading going on intraday. Okay, so so back to this. These these are cycles, okay. And where the cy two cycles meet, these green arcs, that's where you're gonna see a price low. Okay, so you see over the arc comes over, the two arcs meet, we have a price low. Remember, this is about predicting and forecasting what the market's gonna do. All of this on this screenshot here. If you go to the next cycle and we come over to the next end of the next cycle, you see the price was low there too. And then the next one, same thing, price was down. And then the next one, the price came down. And you can see that because we already know the length of these cycles over here, that we're predicting and forecasting where we think another cycle low is going to be. Now that can change. For those of you that don't really know much about cycle analysis, one of the things that trips people up is that they, they get a little too dogmatic about the, the length of this cycle. And this is just an element of time, okay guys? Let me get the pen here. It's just an element of time that goes from left to right. That's all it is. Cycle starts there and goes there. The arc itself doesn't have anything to do with price. Sometimes, sometimes cycles do that, like you'll notice this cycle did that, went up and came down and kind of matched the arc, but you'll notice this one didn't do that, right? So don't get too caught up about the fact that this is an arc. It's more an element of time. Though, you know, pricing does tend to come up and then come down again. That isn't always the case. Okay, so that's an element of time, left to right. So you can see that as we go into the future, because these arcs are already established, 
in the past, right? That we're predicting out here, you know, let's take the most uh, current one. We're predicting out here. You know, some are like whatever it is, October 12th or 14th or something like that, okay? 15th, whatever it is over here, okay? We're predicting there'll be a, a cycle low here. We're going to get into this specific cycle, this one right here, okay? Which really is, you know, this kind of area here, this box. Okay, we'll get into that at, a little bit later on and talk about how this current cycle that we're in is vastly different than all these previous ones. Okay. Okay, so that should just give you some basics just on, you know, time frame and predicting and forecasting what we, what we think the price, pricing is going to do. And just in general, the pricing will come down. That doesn't mean between where it's at now that price can't go way up here and then just drop a little bit. A lot of people make that mistake. They think when they hear that this is going to be a cycle low, that that means right from where we are today, it'll go straight down into that low. No, no, no. That trips up a lot of people too. I see that happen a lot. So this cycle low is not predicting what the pricing is going to do between, bet between you know this point going back to wherever we are, or from wherever we are to this to this cycle low. It's not predicting the price action. It's just predicting there will be a price low there. Okay, and sometimes the price low may not be very discernible. And that's a whole other thing I'll talk about maybe in another video. You know, if you don't get a, if you don't see a perceivable price dip, that's still very useful information. And maybe in a future video I'll, I'll talk about when we don't get a, a, a discernible price dip at an expected cycle low, what does that mean and how do we make use of that for trading? Okay, so now you have an idea of you know time frame and where you expect prices to come down okay those are the green arcs and by the way this is daily chart so we're only talking daily cycles you can also do this with weekly and monthly and i look at weekly and monthly week monthly weekly and daily i look at those charts almost every day constantly look at the charts okay because they update every day a month may move slow the slowest and the weekly seems to move slow, but it's still very important information. And the data that changes every day is really important. Okay, let's talk about this yellow vertical lines we're seeing in the middle of the arc. What's going on there? Well, it's just a midpoint. Yeah, you see it here and the midpoint here, here, and there. And there's going to be one over here. I haven't just haven't drawn it yet, but it's going to be something like that. Okay. So what's the deal? I mean, is it just is it just a convenient vertical line? Well, yeah, it, it is just a convenience, but I'm going to talk about something that's really important that, that a lot of people don't really pick up with their eye. And in fact, a lot of people won't even pick up with their eye th these these obvious cycle lows. They just, because if you're not used to cycle analysis and you haven't dealt with it before, then you won't pick them up. Now, throughout the summer, it's been really obvious. I mean, you know, it's, but it isn't always like that. And a lot of people struggle with picking up cycle lows. But I've been doing this for about five years. And I can usually look at any chart. If there's any kind of discernible cycle there, I can pick it up with my eye. Usually within a matter of like, you know, 10 seconds or less. If I have to spend a lot, a lot of time on a chart struggling to find cycles, I'm not going to bother trading that product because the cycles just aren't there. And I'm not going to waste my time. Remember that one. Don't waste your time with products or symbols that don't show cyclicality. You're going to be guessing. Forget that. There's better things to trade. Okay, so these vertical lines, what's what's the big deal? Let's start with the one on the far left over here. This video is going to get kind of long, so just stay with me. You can always pause it, go get something to eat, whatever. Come back and watch the rest later. Whatever you got to do. This videos could potentially change a lot of lives. And if you really, really pay attention and come back and watch it a few times and really try to understand what's being said here, it could change your financial future for trading, okay? So let's look at this vertical line here. You'll notice that price, sure enough, was low over here, and it rose up, and it came all the way to the end, really high. And then just the last few days of the cycle, it came down. Okay? It did that on all these cycles throughout the summer. You know, those are called, for those of us who do cycle analysis, we, we know that's called right-hand translation. 
it means the high of the of the cycle happened right near the end before the drop. Okay. See how the see all the highs were way over here on the right side of this arc? On the right side of this yellow line is where the high was. The right side. And the peak happened way over here. And then it only fell for a few days. Same thing over here. Look, look right here, guys. The peak of this cycle was way over here. Whoops. Right there. And then it only fell for a few days. Look at the next cycle. The peak was way over to the right. Look at how far to the right on this green arc it was. Way to the right of that yellow line, right? Look at the distance between those two lines. Really far, right? Let's look at the next one. Here's the middle. Where did the peak happen? Oh, the peak happened right in the middle. Didn't it? It didn't happen over here. Like all these other ones. Happened right in the middle. Whoa, we got a behavior change. Okay, it's just like weather. You go from hot summertime, something changed. You know, like this time of year, it gets cooler out. You 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 can observe there's a behavior change. I talked about this in my video back at this time. I said, oh, look at all the spinning tops. Behavior change. And I said, there's going to be a high here. It's going to pull back. We're going to, the market's going to pull back. I'm not going to dive into all that right now, but you can see there's a behavior change, right? The peak was in the middle. It only took another day or two to confirm <laughs> that the peak was in the middle. We'll get into the these other indicators down here that are really important. We'll talk about these and how they how these indicators help really help a lot with me in making decisions when to get in and out of positions, okay? Right now, we're just talking about the cycles and how to read the cycles and the price action within the cycle, okay? So we know there's behavior change in the cycle because the peak happened in the middle, not on the right. That's important information. That's a sign that this green ascending channel may be coming to an end. And you knew it right up in here that you had to pay attention. It's telling you something. Well, why is the peak now in the middle, not on the right-hand side of this vertical line. Okay. Okay, let's go over to this cycle over here, this lat, this current cycle that we're in, this one right here. This cycle, this one. Okay. Where did the peak happen? Let's draw the line. It could peak somewhere else later in this cycle, but for right now, the peak is right here. On the left side of that middle line, look at the distance from the middle to the left. Okay. Now you want to talk about predictive forecasting, predictive algorithms, guys. The distance between the middle line and where the peak is, is mathematically calculable. <laughs> you can calculate this. It's easy. There are the days. For those of you that are mathematicians and in mathematics and geometry, okay, trigonometry, this right here, if you just stop and pause the video, even right here, and think about how you can calculate this and use this in a mathematical equation and help forecast what's going to happen in the market, that's a big hint for you right there. Some of you out there need to work on that. Because I'm already aware of it. Okay, so we know that right here, this cycle, the peak so far has been on the left side of this middle line. So look, guys, going back over here, guys and gals. Because I'm talking to you gals too. I know some of you are traders. Okay, welcome to the channel. Okay. I know we got some very, very smart women. This ain't just this is not just reserved for men. Okay, men and women together on this, right, guys? We're in this together. Okay, so. Look how he went from the far hand, right hand side of the, of the cycle, far right hand side, far right hand side, to the middle of the cycle, and now we're on the left hand side of this cycle, right? The vertical line where the high was was intersecting the right hand side, intersecting the right hand side, the green arc, intersecting on the right, intersecting on the right, intersecting in the middle, <laughs> okay? And now this one, the high of the price intersected on the left. So what is that telling us? It's confirming that pricing has went from being upward. Here the behavior was what we I, I call this a changeover. 
cycle. This cycle here is changing over from upward price action to becoming neutralized to going down. Okay, this is a changeover cycle, or I call it a neutral cycle. Or it's, you might hear it called an ideal cycle. The price came right up in the middle and then came down to the low. And then the next cycle, we already have confirmation that we know price is weak. We can clearly see it by the candlesticks. But remember, this is predicting. We're predicting the future of what the market's going to do. Okay? So now we have strong cause <laughs> to believe that pricing actually will continue to go down. Why? Because we, 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 we know, or at least we have high confidence, that this is going to be a cycle low. And if price has already peaked over here, what does that say about the rest of the cycle? Now, it may come up and go down. It may fart around just sideways and go down. It may go all the way up to the top of that channel and go down. And whichever one of these three it does is going to be very useful information to tell us how strong the next cycle is going to be. Okay. By the way, I'm going to give a shout out to Steve Miller and his team over at AskSlim.com. These guys are probably the foremost experts on cycle analysis. I don't get paid from them. There isn't any kind of financial kickbacks or anything like that that mention them. I just give credit where credit's due. Those guys have a great team. Steve Miller has been my mentor for five years. He probably doesn't know that, but you know, he's been my mentor just through his content. And that's where I learned about cycle analysis. You can get it also through studying Jim Hurst cycles. That's readily available. You can still buy his book, but yeah, those, that team over there, those guys are top notch. So shout out to, to, to slim and the entire team. Hope you guys are doing well. All right. So this should help you understand, you know, how, Part of what I use to help predict what's going to happen in the future, right? I know I know now, if I didn't have any of these other indicators and didn't know anything else and didn't have channels and, and all I knew was just cycles, that would I would still do pretty well at trading because I would know there's a cycle low. And I would just wait for red candlesticks to kind of appear somewhere as we enter into this phase over here into this expected low, and I would trade it. I may not be as profitable as I could be with all the other things I'm going to show you, but I would still be profitable, just probably not as much. Okay. So really important to understand how the nature of the pricing within the cycle changed and the cycle shows you that. Okay. Let's clear the screen here. So now let's go back and talk about this. Now that you have an understanding of how the, the, the peak of pricing moved within the cycles as we went moving from uh, the past into the current into present and into the future so we expect this cycle low i expect this cycle low you know to to be pretty you know <laughs> much further down than definitely over here and over here <laughs> right expect it to be like a lot of price decline coming. Because the peak happened early. So in theory, you would expect more, on the average, more price decline all the way down into the cycle low. It doesn't mean it's going to come all the way down here to 40, 50. You know, don't get confused by the, the pricing over here on the right that this means that it has to come down to touch this intersection here. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that. Remember, this is just an element of time, these green arcs, not price. But it does tell us the cycle low is here, and it's probably going to happen pretty dramatically because we've already got the peak. Okay. Between between this candlestick and this point, like I said already, the, the pricing in this probably going to happen in this area. I don't think we're going to get that. You follow me? I don't think we're going to see this massive price up to new all-time highs and then a little down spike i mean a down into this low and then off to the races i mean that the chance that's is that possible yes but it's probably i'm not going to throw out a percentage but the probability is low and that's what we're dealing that's what we talk about probabilities probability is high that it'll, it'll fart around in here somewhere and then come down 
And that's extremely useful. We can trade that. You can make a lot of money. <laughs> make a lot of money on that. Okay. All right. The, the, what's up with the uh, middle line, the vertical line here? Well, look how the price stalled. The price came up and it stalled right here for a few days. See it? Right in the middle. The next one. Price came up, stalled for a few days right in the middle. Price came up. And this time it stalled a little bit left of the, of the middle of the cycle and then took off. That's okay. Sometimes it'll happen right in the middle like these two. Sometimes it happens on the left of the, of the middle line. Let's look at this one. Where did it stall? This one stalled right smack dab in the middle of the cycle. Where did this one stall? Well, it didn't really stall because we got really high volatility and there's no stalling going on. It's just bam, bam, bam. <laughs> we love, well, we don't love, we like volatility a lot. This is high profitability time. You know, I mentioned recently in a comment, comment somewhere in somebody's video, I said, expect to hear the, 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 the uh, two words that traders, that short side traders want to hear, circuit breaker. Expect to hear that in the near future. I think we're going to hear those two words, circuit breaker. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. Okay, so I hope you see that at the middle line, we often see price action stalls. When we get to the middle line, and price action doesn't stall, that's useful information too. But here we are in the middle. Monday is the middle. Today is Sunday, or Saturday, sorry. Okay, and uh, this was done on Friday. That's why you see October 1st up here in, in the left-hand corner here. Okay, but Monday is going to be the 4th, which is the middle of this cycle, approximately. Give or take a day or two. And we're going to see there's a price stall here. It probably will. Pricing will stall and just kind of fart around in here. And once again, the middle of the cycle is going to show, show us that pricing tends to stall in the middle of the cycle. That's probably what's going to happen. It doesn't always happen, right? We don't get too dogmatic about cycle analysis, guys. We don't, we don't get so dogmatic that nothing else can happen. And if it does, cycle analysis sucks and I'll never use it. See, it doesn't work. People say that. No, don't do that to yourself. <laughs> okay? It works. Just don't be too dogmatic about it. Let it breathe a little. Okay, so I expect pricing to kind of fart around in here as we hit this middle of this cycle and then pricing coming down, okay? Once again, just more confirmation. Okay, let's go down. I'm gonna try to finish up this video. Hopefully I can keep it under a half an hour. Let's look at the stochastic momentum index. It's, I mean, not too difficult, right? We can see there's momentum here. It comes up. You got a fast line, which is the light blue line. You got a slow line, which is the red line. When you see a crossover like you did here and here, right? You see it crossed over there. It crossed over there. Okay, we got a good crossover there. You see all these places where the moment, so a castle momentum crossed over, right? The blue line crossed over the red line here and here. So it's pretty obvious what that indicator does, right? It tells you about momentum, price momentum, okay? But what's up with this purple line? <laughs> what's going on here? Let's come down to this indicator right here. Big Daddy Forecast. A lot of people want to know about this algorithm that I wrote. Okay. Yeah, it is what it says. It's a forecaster. It forecasts the future of the market. It's not always perfect, but it is extremely useful. And you'll notice there's a number here. Now we're on the daily chart, right? Up here's a daily chart. D for daily. Okay, so on any given day, you, you're going to get this number. That's what this forecaster does. It gives us a number. It outputs a score. Call it a score. Okay, it's fine. Okay. You'll notice that as pricing was coming up, this forecaster got really peaky right here. See it? It peaked right here. I don't remember what the number was on that day because this number is obviously not that. This this number is, um, you know, this day over here. That day. Okay. That's what 299.44 is, is the day we're on. So you can ignore that number for now. Okay. But this peak right here, this peak in the Big Daddy forecast, let's follow it all the way up to Stoicast Monk Minimum Index. There's no peak there, is there? The peak comes, when did it come? 
about a day later. So the Big Daddy Forecaster or any predictive forecasting algorithm that predicts and forecasts the market is going to, well, <laughs> it's going to tell you something is coming that it hasn't happened yet. And if you look at the momentum, stochastic momentum index, sure enough, it's ahead of it by what? A day a day or two. Come down to the VIX. For those of you that want to know about forecasting and can you do it, well, the VIX sometimes, but not always, is every bit as good as the Big Daddy forecaster. Look at it. It, it bottomed. Exact same time the Big Daddy peaked. The next day on the Big Daddy forecast, we can see that, and, and this is where people, this is where people kind of get lost. They, they don't pay attention to the details. They think it means nothing, but they're wrong. It means a lot. And you, if you pay attention, you, you can make a lot of money. Look at the next day. The peak was lower. Look at the next day of the VIX. The peak was a little bit, not the peak, but I should say the value. Just, just basic geometry, even without a VIX number and a big daddy forecast score, even without those numbers, Basic geometry tells you something came down from that peak to the next day. Something went up from this low to the next day on the VIX, right? Basic geometry is telling you that. And you notice that over here on the stochastic momentum index, it hasn't rolled over yet. So I'm scratching, we're scratching our head. What's going on here? We're scratching our head. What's happening? <laughs> well, what's happening is these two indicators are forecasting something's about to happen on a daily time frame. Not in minutes or hours, but daily. The next day, price still was going up. The stochastic momentum index on two days later, we got a red candlestick. Uh-huh. Red candlestick, you say? Hmm. That's going to get your interest right there. Why? Because the VIX, even if you don't have a big daddy forecaster like I do, the Big Daddy forecast, as you can see, is more reliable than the VIX more often. But nevertheless, for those of you who wanted to forecast, the VIX, in this case, back in the early part of June, told you a couple days ahead, watch out for a down day. And sure enough, two days later, it happened. And then the stochastic momentum index began to show signs of what? Getting ready to cross over. We're getting confirmation right here on that day. Okay? Getting confirmation on this this red day right here. Everybody follow me so far? Now you could take a short side trade right there if you wanted to. It's a little aggressive. Or you could wait till the next day. At the beginning of the next day, maybe just like a fourth of the way down on that candlestick, you jump in. Now you don't jump in. I hear people on my channel say, I'm all in. And I've talked about this before. I cringe on that. Don't go all in. I know some people have done that. Okay. Go in small, especially if you're not a very good trader. And you need to be honest with yourself if you're not a good trader. If you're losing a lot more money than you're making, just be honest about it. Suck it up. Look in the mirror. And just be honest. I suck as a trader. And, and you're going to start over. And you're going to do better. And what you're going to do is, once you see confirmation like this that we're talking about here, you're going to take a small position. Five shares one e micro contract on futures, whatever it is, small, meaning it's a very small portion of your uh, brokerage account, your portfolio. Then you're going to enjoy the rest of that day and watch money come in. Then you're going to close it. Okay, maybe you don't do it for a whole day. Maybe you make 50 bucks and close it. Maybe it's 100 bucks. Maybe for some of you, it's 1,000 bucks. Maybe it's 5,000, whatever it is. Okay, close the position, book the profits. On this channel, we lock in our profits using trailing stops. And we book the profits. Don't leave them hanging around. That's nonsense. Okay, so now you begin to see how the VIX and the Big Daddy forecast in this particular case over here back in June could have made you some money if you were paying attention. Let's go to the next cycle. Look at it again. I know the video is long, but I hope you're learning something and stick with me, okay? Over here, another purple line. What's up with that? This time, the VIX didn't do a very good job, did it? It was already just kind of sideways. It's really hard to get a read on the VIX here. The VIX isn't really helping us. Right? It's like, okay. 
The VIX already came down. It kind of was flat. It's hard to get a read. It, you know, you can still kind of use it here, especially on this bump right here. So it is useful, but it's not really predictive. It's kind of just reactive in this case. But look at the Big Daddy Forecaster. It absolutely nailed it. Yeah, it spiked around that day. Where the VIX on that day was just flat. It just did the same thing the previous day did. Okay. So if you looked at the VIX, you, you would have to you would have to just trust that next day spike, which is not predictive, right? You're reacting on the same day because you got the red candlestick on that day right there. So it's a little bit reactive. We don't want to we we can trade reactively. You know, we do sometimes. That's the way it happens. But we prefer to trade predictively <laughs> based on a, prefer, a, a, a past prediction. Much more powerful, right? Remember, we're talking about prediction. We've used cycles and cycle analysis as a part of that. Now we're looking at algorithms. The volatility, the VIX can be predictive sometimes. In my case, I have a, a Big Daddy Forecast algorithm that's predictive. Okay, stochastic momentum index is not predictive. It's reactive. But that's good. And why? I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Okay, so in this case, the Big Daddy Forecast nailed it. Did a really good job. The next day, we it came down. And we saw a red candlestick up here. We could have taken a trade right there. This green candlestick the day after probably would have scared a lot of people out. And they would have closed their positions, maybe. Hopefully profitable. But traders probably who have some maturity would have stayed in on this. And and I probably would have stayed in, you know, maybe. Because I know what? I know a cycle low is due. You get it, guys and gals? You see now the power? You don't freak out right here on this green candlestick? You could close it if you want to and then reacquire on the next day on the red day. That's fine. I might have even done that. But there's high confidence that the price isn't going to go that way. Even on a green candlestick day, the high confidence the price is going to go this way because we're heading to a low in the cycle. So just think about how we coupled all so far June and back here in July. So far we've coupled forecastive predictive indicators with cycle analysis to give us a lot of confidence on how to trade. Okay, let's look at, I want to look at something here and show you something. Some of you may, for, the, for, for some of you have a sharp eye, you'd say, well, why didn't you trade this peak in the Big Daddy forecast and this drop in the VIX? You talked about it over here. There was a peak there, there. Why not these? What's up? Well, you want to know why? That we would be really cautious about not taking a short side trade here, even though these indicators suggest that something's going to happen because guess where it's happening on the left side of the cycle the middle of the cycle is here we haven't even gotten to the middle of the cycle does that does that mean that these these uh indicators are wrong that the price couldn't drop early it definitely could drop early in fact we even got a red day but it's in the middle of the cycle and we know that middle of cycles do what guys and gals stall sometimes often stall price stalls in the middle of the cycle so we're we're not going to ignore these indicators that are suggesting there's, there's something going to happen in this case to the low side but we're not going to be all jumping in a hurry and take big positions and do all that we're going to wait for confirmation to see if pricing was going to go down from there because it's on the left side of the cycle and really important, this, this is really important, this last piece, momentum is still going up. So that's why on those indicators right there that are suggesting something's going to happen, it doesn't have as much credence and as much weight in our decision making as the next ones. Even though the VIX didn't really help us out in this case. Okay, if you're having a hard time understanding that, after you get done watching this video, 
come back to this, pause it, and just look at it for a while and listen to what I said and go over it a bunch of times. Write it down. Make some notes. Whatever you got to do. And, and don't put so much pressure on yourself to learn this all in one day. That's just not going to happen. Just allow yourself to mature, okay? That's why meantime, until you get really good at this, you're going to take small positions, right, everybody? Until you get good at this, small positions only. Otherwise, you're going to be crying in the corner about how you lost a bunch of money. Okay, let's look at the next purple purple line. What's going on here? We see the peak is over here, right? The peak is here. But we're, we're over here. We're two days before the peak. How do how, how do we know? Look at the look at the momentum's not even anywhere near peaking. Has the crossover happens way over here. Like four days later, a crossover happens. Let's go down and look at the big daddy. Oh, what do you know? Nice peak. Hmm. That's helpful. That's telling us something might be coming. The next day was down just a little bit. So not a huge movement, but but in this case, this number and not this particular number right here, but the number on that day, which was probably like, you know, 470 or some crazy huge number. I don't know what it was exactly, guys, but 450, 460, whatever it was. You know, now there's some minutia here. There's some details here that are kind of hard to, to dive into in, in this video. But this number on that day also really helped here. But the peak on the Big Daddy forecast really helped us out. Something's coming. And look at the VIX. Even the VIX wasn't really predictive here. Because it, it didn't tell us about something until over here a couple days later. But it was still good. And this is what I want you guys to all get. Okay. Is when we're talking about predicting. See this little dotted line right here? This little dotted line. See if I can draw on it. See it right there? See how the, the VIX actually had a low the day before that dotted line or like before it so we don't have to i don't have to draw the way up right we're just going to follow the dotted line all the way up and the vix had a low right on this day guys right there and then the next day the vix this day right here the vix came up on that day oh how can that be why would the vix go up on a green day this day right here green day VIX actually came up. It's to the right of this dotted line, so we know it's right about there. Got to pay attention to detail, got details, guys and gals. The VIX actually came up, right? We can see it had a low the day before, and it came up. Hmm. Why would the VIX come up on a green day? So for those of you guys that don't have the Big Daddy forecast, which I may make um, available a subscription service, maybe. I talked about this yesterday. I might as well interject in here now. I'm thinking about it. But that requires some planning and possibly support staff and some stuff. So just everybody be patient. If I do it, I'll announce it in a video. Okay, I am thinking about it. But not yet. When that happens, um, of course, the Big Daddy Forecast would be part of the decision process making and all the service and, and so on and so forth. Okay. All right, so... For those of you that want to use something now, the VIX can often, but not always, give you a heads up. Okay? And the next day, the VIX is giving you a little spike here, and on a green day, that should give you a little moment of pause to say, hmm, something's going on here. And then when you got when you got into the, the, the first part of this day, and it was red, yeah, take a position. You take a small position right there and get ready to add to it as the day went down. Just keep on shorting it in the first third of it and pile it on in the first third. But but for you new beginner traders or people who lose way more than you make, don't do that. Just keep it small for now. Don't add to your position. I won't <laughs> I won't go into all the reasons why you need to hear what I'm telling you. Don't go big yet. Not even medium. If you're a trader that loses a lot of money, keep it small. It's going to help you grow as a trader. You have to learn how to overcome your emotions and anxiety and fear and getting jumping in and out of trades. You, you're not there yet. Learn how to profit small. Okay, I, I can't hold everybody's hand and force you to do it, but if you listen to what I'm telling you, you'll become a very good trader and you'll make a lot of money in the future, but don't do it all on day one. 
Give it six months. Give it a year. Whatever. Remember, I told you I've been studying uh, um, predictive analysis and cycle analysis for five years. And is it until just this year I became a, a really good trader? Or at least better. Okay, let's look at the, the next one. And then we'll... we'll um, I'm trying to get this video finished. I'm sorry. I know it's a long video, but I want everybody to get this. Look at this one. Oh, my gosh. The peak was way over here. Literally one, two, three, four days later, the peak was over here. Yet here's the purple line. It literally told us it would be a market peak four days before it happened. Can you get that out of the momentum, stochastic momentum index? No, you can't. And the days to follow are just flat. Can you get that out of the VIX? No, you can't get that out of the VIX. Flat, straight across, nothing. Big Daddy forecast, absolutely nailed it, piled it on. Huge. I remember this very well. Back here on July 1st, too, the same thing happened, like, oh, right here. Here. I knew it was coming. I talked about it. Yes, I made big money all the way through all this. Big money. Thousands and thousands of dollars are made here. That's not bragging. I'm just letting you know that predictive forecast analysis, if you study it, if you pay attention, if you work at it, can make you a lot of profit. It's not about arrogance. Now, let me just say something here. Whether we're using the VIX, whether we're using the Big Daddy Forecast, or whatever other predictive analysis you're using, cycle analysis. Because all if you only had cycles, these spinning tops should have gave you all you needed to know about what was going on in this cycle. That something had changed, as we talked about earlier, that the peak happened in the middle instead of on the right side. That should have told you a lot right there. But we want confirmation. And where is it? Right here. Crossover on the Stochastic Moment Index. Some red candlesticks really beginning to pour it on. Even if you're late to the party, as they say, you still would have made money on this day. <laughs> or maybe that day. So don't freak out as you are just learning this and getting and increasing your understanding. Knowledge is not enough. You have to have understanding or what we call wisdom. You have to take all the pieces of knowledge and put them all together like a puzzle. And that requires wisdom. That takes time. All right. So I hope you understood that right there, go back, pause video, listen to that section again about how we had predicted what the market was going to do, but we waited for confirmation. Okay, we waited. Right there would be confirmation, kind of in that area. This crossover is good, solid confirmation. You know, me, because I've been doing this for a while, I, I think I got a little aggressive and got in like right up in here a little early and made a... Man, I made a couple hundred bucks every every day there, whatever it was. I don't remember. Okay, I was pulling two and three hundred dollars a day up in this area. Okay, some of them were bigger. Okay, this last cycle we talked about it earlier. We talked about how the peak was on the left side. This peak right here is on the left side of this uh, cycle. Left hand translation. It's happened on the left side. Remember that? Not on the right. Not even in the middle. On the left, we know the peak is here. But look where the purple line is. A day ahead of time. And the VIX absolutely nailed it here, guys. Look at the Stochastic Momentum Index. Momentum, it's saying, oh, there's plenty of price to go up, baby. We're going to the moon. No, we're not. <laughs> the, if you follow the Stochastic Momentum, if you're just a momentum trader, mm, ouch, that didn't work out very well. Going to the moon. No, no, we're not going to the moon. And the Big Daddy forecast, which had a peak and the next day dropped, and the VIX had a nice trough and the next day was up, it told you otherwise. It told us otherwise, didn't it? The purple people eater line. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, some of you remember, may remember that purple people eater. It's an old song. Anyway, the purple people eater line, it told us that no, no, no we're not going to the moon. Okay, we're, we, caution, something's happening. VIX nailed it, guys.
this is one of those times where the VIX was 100% predictive. It totally, absolutely nailed it. Right there on that day was your confirmation. Something was up. We already were in a highly volatile market. The VIX has been elevated. I mean, it's not rocket science at this point. You're in this channel. Forget the momentum indicator at this point. It's just confirmation later on over here. And by then, it's it's so obvious that this thing is so late to the game. Forget about it. That's why for you momentum traders, you get caught out. Momentum's not enough. It's confirmation. And I use confirmation. I emphasize that all the time. But in this case, it's super late. It crossed over like over here. I mean, okay, you could be aggressive and, and right where it starts to cross over. You would have caught it on this big red candlestick, and eh, yeah, that's fine. You still make money maybe at the hat back half of the day and then this day. Okay, but it's a little bit late. All right, so I hope you understood predictive analysis, how powerful it can be. Okay, don't make the mistake of on the day you get the peaks or the very next day you make the trade. No, 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 no. You need confirmation. Usually that's going to come by a, by a momentum. Okay. Sometimes it's the next day. Sometimes it's two days later. In this case, look how it was. Really, really confirmation didn't come to like probably that day right there. Literally five days later was your confirmation. Okay. And even then, the forecaster, I mean, I'm sorry, the momentum stochastic, yeah, it was, it was already crossing over. So Stochastic Momentum Index was giving you confirmation the lines were beginning to separate. Mm, bang, jump on it. Okay. Very, very helpful, right, guys? Guys and gals, helpful that we could see that, yes, you can predict the stock market sometimes. Okay? Now, on these, these bottoms, right? You even got confirmation going on here on the bottoms. Is it before the crossover? Look at the crossovers over here. Yeah, of course it is, right there. It's like, it literally is about a day ahead or two days ahead of the stochastic momentum index. Okay. So even the, even this one right here is beginning to tell us that the bottom is in, but as I'm now going to finish up this video, cause I know it's really long. But we don't have confirmation because we have no crossover, and we cannot ignore that this is a big downtrend going into a cycle low. So don't uh, try not to trade against the trend. The trend is down. So for those of you that are new and you're and you're not a money maker and you have don't know, and you don't know how to make money, you're not profitable, you're new to trading, or you just stink at trading you're going to be honest with yourself, right? Then just trade short side trades. Only when you're positive, you got a short side going on. Don't, don't trade these, these, uh, rebounds. Stay away from those for now. Okay. Don't trade that. Only trade when you see red candle six coming off the top and starting to come down, just trade those. Okay. Until, until, until you see something change. Educational video only, guys. I do not give financial advice. I'm only sharing with you what I do. Strictly educational video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Make sure you click that little bell to be notified of all the videos we put out. I know this video is going to help a lot of people. We'll talk to you all real soon again next time.